we also change our idea. One, at one time, slim is a good quality. Another time, it's not good quality. So, slim itself is not a thing. Our idea about slim being a good thing. So, slim itself is not only the component. We also have some attitude saying slim is a good thing. If slim itself is a good thing, at all the times, in any situations, in any culture, in any way of thinking, it should be good. But no, when they do not accept this as good quality, it will not please you. Where it is being accepted as good quality, it please you. But not actually the actual concept of slimness. Whether there is an attitude of calling this as good, then only. So now what we are getting is, whatever the ideas are there, whatever the, in relation to that idea, is not a permanent value. It's not permanent value. The changing value is there. For instance, during the communist revolution in Russia, the value of many things changed. Maybe they are precious stones. Now children begin to use it as a kind of toy. Before it's being sold at quite a huge amount price. And then they change the idea and then there's no one who's going to buy. So now children are throwing it away playing. When the communism changed again, then people to begin to collect. Because it is being sold at 10 rubles, now maybe 100 rubles, after that 10, 1000 rubles, it changes. So if the thing itself has the value, it should never change. We keep the value. Mm. This is what I'm giving you, a practical how change comes in, in the human society, like say, uh, uh, in the communist countries, they change this idea. So what you're saying, Kesha, it's a mess, really, isn't it? Pardon? It's a mess. Met. A mess. Mess. It's a terrible mess because it will always change and always be different and we will affect how things turn out because of all the subtleties within us. So the truth changes. So what changes is not a truth. It's impermanent. What changes is not a truth. So therefore in Buddhism, they say, ultimate truth which never changes. Mm -hmm. Conventional truth which changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they are not totally different. This is how it appears to us. And this other one, when we make the analysis, when we go to the deeper analysis, we find this. So at present we have the difficulty this appears, but this does not appear. When it appears, this does not appear. So, how we resolve this condition? Just as say in Buddhism, when you get enlightened, you don't see the difference. You, when you see this, you also see this thing. But then you know what it means. So there is no condition. At the same time, you can see both then you see this is the other side of the thing. Now, when you see the, the head side of the coin, you don't see the tail side of the coin. When you see the other one, you don't see. So this is our dilemma. When you come to this point of uh, knowing everything, then this the kind of a dilemma of not being able to see both sides at the same time is gone or transcended. Now you are able to know things from both aspects at the same time. And so, therefore, there is no problem for you. This problem will remain for other people who have not yet transcended this thing. So this is one of the qualities of an enlightened being is this. He is able to see both aspects of the reality. Conventional as well as the ultimate reality at the same time. 
in the different times we can also do when you stay, sit in a meditation try to examine then you begin to see the reality ah it is like that it's not like this thing but when you stop the meditation when you say and you begin to see the actual thing then ah then this is thing so at the different time this we also can know this thing of course many people will not easily get to the sense of the reality ultimate reality but they can if they make some effort but still the division will remain there. When you see this, you will not see this. When you see this, you cannot see this. When you get enlightened, you transcend all the limitations, then both can be, not only seen, both can be experienced at the same time. And that resolves all the conflicts within that person. Until that time, Geshe, that we're enlightened, we, uh, uh, we constantly go from ultimate reality to conventional reality. Yes. We get caught in the, in the well, conventional reality. Yeah, we can. And uh, we can. We will. We, we get the caught in the conflict of the distal. Yeah. And of course, our experience of the conventionality is 99%. Our experience or understanding of the ultimate is only 1%. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But now how we resolve till this step, and how we resolve, now there comes the role of your acceptance or your understanding. And now here people might call it your belief. Now this belief is based on your understanding. Still it is a belief because you are not actually experiencing this. But you believe that thing. And this belief is not based on kind of say, some idea. You already analyze. You begin to understand this thing. But still it remains out of your experience. So therefore you have to go along with what we say belief. That's why in, you will understand, belief is not necessary, but it's beneficial. Beneficial? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's useful, but it's not necessary. <laughs> you remember, that I repeat all the time, I say this thing, belief is not necessary, but it's useful, it's <laughs> beneficial. <laughs> So what happens in our normal society, especially in modern time, we are much against the belief. And they do not understand the role of belief. And this comes from their misunderstanding or their not understanding. How the belief we are talking about is based on our actual knowing and our understanding, but still it is, does not come in the range of your experience. When you see the distinction, then you say, ah, my belief is not totally unlinked to my actual experience. It has not yet come into that experience, but I have crossed certain boundaries. There I begin to know it, I begin to understand it. Yet it has not become my experience. So I can accept this thing. I can agree with this thing. And therefore, I can go by this crotch of the belief in this concept. Now, in modern time, what happens? People break their legs, but they don't. They have the pride or the, so, yeah, pride of not wanting to go by the crotch 